everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my biggest tips for new artists. Now this video that you're seeing in the background, I do have it available as a real-time tutorial on my channel. I just decided to speed it up so that you have something to look at while you're listening to me talk. So I'm going to get right into my first tip. And that is that anybody can be an artist. It doesn't matter what age you are. Now we've all heard that argument that you were born with the talent or you have special skills unlike other people, but that's really not true. What is true is that most people that have that talent or have that special skill started at a very young age. As soon as they could pick up a pencil, they would doodle, they would draw, they would try to draw what they saw, whether it was, you know, the cartoons they were watching or from comic books or from real life. They started at a very young age. And as they aged, they continued to draw and their skills just progressed over time. So that eventually when they started taking art more seriously, they already had a base skill of drawing down pat, which would make their art career a little bit easier. So they already had those basic skills. That being said though, you can learn to draw at any age. It just takes practice and it takes patience. It's not going to happen overnight. So you have to put in the time and effort to be able to do it. And that's where a lot of people seem to drop out. They want to, you know, pick up a pencil and be amazing at it right away. And unfortunately, that's not always how it goes. And that leads me into my second tip, which is don't expect your art to look perfect the first time you try. And that goes also for if you're switching mediums. So let's say you're a colored pencil artist and you always use colored pencil and then you switch to watercolor. Well, don't expect to have the same results as you would with your colored pencils the first time because it is a new medium to you or art is completely new to you. So you may have to take the time to practice. And don't be afraid of your fails because you will learn so much from your fails. Don't throw them out. Keep them because that's a learning curve for you. You know, you'll see what you did wrong, you'll learn from it, and then you'll take that information into your next piece so you can change things. You know, I didn't like the way I did this, but I liked the way I did that. So, you know, take that piece and bring it into your next piece of artwork. Also, don't be afraid of the ugly stages, and I will let you know every artist goes through this. We all take a look at our piece at one point while we're painting it, drawing it, whatever, and we go, I don't know if I'm going to make this one pull through. Every artist, I think, goes through that. And it's called the ugly stage, but the ugly stage can last for quite a long time in a piece of artwork. So sometimes I find the best thing to do is to just put it away, step away for a day or two, and come back. And most often than not, you'll actually be pleasantly surprised with what you find in your piece, and you will think, Oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was originally. Also, most artists tend to finish their piece a little bit too quickly and they wonder why they're not getting the results they want. Sometimes it's just as easy as keep layering, keep going, making sure that your darks are dark enough, your brights are bright enough. You know, you really want to get that contrast in there. So sometimes you stop too soon and your artwork just looks a little too flat. So sometimes you just need to keep going at it, keep working at it, and you'll eventually get it to where you want it to be. You might just need to put in a little bit more time into your piece. The next tip that I have for you is don't feel like you need the most expensive or the best supplies that you can get out there. Sometimes the best supplies to start with are just the ones that you can afford or the ones that you can get easily. So you hear a lot of artists talk about archival quality and you know artwork lasting and being light fast and all that and that's great if you're planning to sell this artwork but if you just want to jump in and see if art's for you or if this different medium is for you you definitely don't need professional supplies you can get away with just student grade supplies and don't fall into the trap of i need all the colors you don't if it's colored pencils Go ahead and grab, you know, a 12 set of colored pencils, or if you want to try watercolors, get the three primaries, or you can splurge and get six primaries and have a split palette, you know, of warms and cools. 
that will honestly be enough for you to try the medium out, see if it's even something worth investing your money or your time into. And you might decide, no, I don't really like this or yes, I really love this. And then you can decide if it's worth it to purchase you know, more student grade products in that line or if you wanna go ahead and start investing into the professional ones right away. And that goes for paper too. You know, most often than not, as long as you get a paper that's meant for that medium that you're using, you're okay. You don't have to have the best, the most expensive stuff. Now, this next tip that I have, a lot of artists will tell you not to do. And I sort of disagree because I think this can be a valuable tool for you at any stage in your art, really. And so this tip is to compare your art to other artists but do it the right way. So don't just look at their art and tell yourself, oh my gosh, they're so good at this. I'm never gonna get there. My art's never gonna look like theirs. That's not the way to do it. What I'm talking about is looking at their art and seeing what's different about theirs compared to yours. What do you like about their artwork? What do you not like? What are they doing different or what techniques are they using that you could incorporate into your artwork? You could even try reaching out to this artist on their social media and asking them how they created this certain effect that you would like to do in your artwork. And most artists would be more than happy to answer your questions over social media or even make a short video about it. So don't be afraid to reach out to your favorite artists. And my last tip for you today is to watch tutorials. There are lots of places out there, especially on YouTube, where you can get free tutorials, including this channel, so you don't always have to go to paid sites to get them. And nowadays, you'll find a tutorial just about on any subject, on any medium out there, and whether you're looking for sped up voiceover tutorials or if you want um, full real-time tutorials, there is so many options out there for you. And a good artist slash teacher will not only show you their best tutorials, but they'll also show you the ones that don't turn out that great. But again, these are such good learning opportunities. And whether you're following along with the tutorial or not, even just listening to it in the background while you're creating your own art or while you're cleaning or cooking, you'll pick up little tips and tricks from each artist that you're watching or listening to and you'll start adding to your skill set and knowledge. You'll also be able to see how they troubleshoot things when it doesn't always go the way they plan for it to go. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, I have a bonus tip for you. And that is, don't wait, start now. And all you need to get started is a piece of paper and a pencil, and you're good to go. So whether that's just grabbing the nearest object that's near you and a piece of paper and a pencil and just trying to draw it to the best of your ability, but just get started because that's usually the hardest part for people is to just get started, but you just need to put that pencil to the paper and get going. And sometimes using graphite at the beginning is better because you're just focusing on your lights and darks, your values, you know, your perspective, um, your freehanding skills or whether you're going to use the grid method or tracing all are acceptable ways of getting your image onto the paper. Now, if you're not interested in graphite, then maybe don't start there. Start with whatever interests you because then you're going to be more likely to put the time and effort into learning it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you did, please subscribe, give a like, and leave a comment down below of what your biggest art advice or tips for new artists would be, because I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next one.